Hello, my name is Dorte Rosen, and I'm a goldsmith in Halifax, and today I'm going to talk about um, the marks that you will see inside your uh, jewelry that says what kind of quality of the metal it is. So that refers to, for example, the 925 you would see on your silver, or the, um, you know, 14K, um, 18K, that kind of thing that you would see um, on your jewelry. And I wanted to, uh, today I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. And then I think in another live, I will talk about more of the details um, about each kind of mark and what they connote. And today I'm coming to you for, again from my living room. There's, look in the background, my, our, uh, these are our Yumi's um, called, uh, they're, they're the Japanese longbows that we practice archery with. Uh, you may have heard that I do uh, Japanese archery as a form of meditation. And these are not strung, so they are, they are just uh, resting. But yeah, the reason I'm in my living room, let me try to do this, and that's my dining room in the background. I like colors. Is because uh, we have a phone here, and uh, I cannot get into my studio. The the there was first rain, and then um, well, there was a bunch of sideways freezing rain, and it got into my lock. And try as I might, I couldn't get in there today, which is too bad because I wanted to show you these uh, stamps. But you know, we roll with the punches. Artists know to pivot. Um, and, uh, so I'll just talk about it and I'll show you a couple of, uh, photos from my files on my phone. Luckily I have some that I can show you. So, um, <laughs> it's just so funny that I couldn't get into the studio. It's hilarious. So let me tell you, um, in your jewelry, you may not have noticed this, but there is, if there is a mark that says, for example, 18K, standing for 18 karat gold, or 14K, this of course refers to how many parts out of 24, pure, carat, uh, pure gold is 24 carats. So 18K means there's 18 parts gold and six parts something else. So that's how that works. But the person who put that stamp in there, and it's usually a stamp, it can apply, be applied in other ways, but that uh, person also has to basically sign the piece and say that who's who's claiming to say that this is 14 karat or uh, 18 karat or even with the 925, which means it's uh, 925 parts out of a thousand uh, silver and uh, the other part is usually copper. That's for silver, sterling silver. So who's to say that that's, that's what it is? And uh, it's the maker's mark that shows who does that set that and this is actually a lot more complicated just like so many things in jewelry and this is a lot more complicated than you would think and why is that so the maker's mark i mean it's kind of and i will talk about more about the quality mark meaning those 14k 18k and then they're very you know there's platinum and palladium and like vermeil and um gold plated and gold filled and all those kinds of things. I'll talk about that some other time, but today I'm going to concentrate more on the, uh, on the maker's mark, which is that, uh, Ooh, and I actually didn't get a picture of that, but if you've received a package from me, you will have seen that swishy D and that if you turn it upside down, it's an R it's also on my website. It's all over the place. It's my logo. And that logo is also my maker's mark. And if you look closely uh, in jewelry that you got from me more recently, well, like in the last, I don't know, I'll get to that. Uh, it would have, uh, if it has a quality mark in it, it would also have that swishy D and R in it, which is, by the way, it was hand drawn by me. It's my, uh, it's my own handwriting. D standing for Dorte, R standing for Rosen. So this is that mark has to be registered. And what it is, is a, um, it's actually, uh, it's, it's a trademark. It's a registered trademark 
covered on the the, the Canadian uh, uh, Intellectual Property Office, and it has to be registered. That mark has to be registered on the Canadian Trademarks database. And let me tell you, that is not so easy to do. Uh, you have uh, to. It's almost impossible to do without a lawyer. Um, it takes many years. Uh, it took me. Well, I don't even want to get into it because I started registering it, and then at the time my marriage fell apart, and I I had more important things happening. So um, uh, I picked it up again more recently, like maybe ten years ago. It ended up taking over three years to get that mark registered, working with a trademark lawyer. Um, and some back and forth and so that mark is it's a it's a regular trademark but it has to be it has to be registered uh, and in order to comply with the precious precious metals making mark whoa I do make things out of precious metals but it's the precious metals marking act which is under the competition bureau um, and why is that because an essay officer can come anytime and uh, take a sample of gold that you have marked to be 18 karat gold and check it to see if it really is 18 karat. And this is too bad because in the studio I would have showed you mine, uh, I would have shown you my own uh, gold tester. So there is a method, a, a tool that you can use to test gold. And if they test my gold and it turns out to be less than 18 karat, uh, I would not be allowed to make jewelry anymore. So this is the serious business. Obviously, I would never mark something that isn't uh, the right, um, the right care, uh, the right. I would only mark it accordingly to what it actually is. But of course, uh, I'm not everyone. But that is what those two marks are. Uh, that is the legislation that these things are covered under. Uh, you know, it's very official. <laughs> the Competition Bureau, the Precious Metals Marking Act, the Intellectual Property Office, uh, the Canadian Trademarks Registry, and so forth. So uh, if you've ever wondered about that, that's what that is. And then maybe I'll get into that another time, but um, there are also... Um, Sometimes you stamp more than one thing. So if something is sterling silver, like a lot of these, these actually, maybe I can show you, I don't know. Uh, this is my new ring that I gifted myself. And this one is sterling silver. And it also has, I'm gonna, I, this is gonna be impossible, maybe. It also has uh, an 18 karat gold bezel. Oh no, I can't show it. But in here, that's the, um, that's the stamp, and it reads um, nine to five. Um, uh, actually, has a P because it's palladium uh, white, uh, palladium sterling. This one, and then it says eighteen karat because there's less eighteen karat in it than there is silver in it, and then it has my maker's mark on it. So that's how we know what that is, and then this one, oh sorry, this one, my two footer that I've had since like for 30 years or something, 24, no, not 30. I've been a jeweler for over 20, but this I've probably had for 18 or something. I was, I did not have a registry, so I did not uh, at the time mark that. Plus it's mine. I know what it is. I know it's 18 karat, but that's why this uh, didn't have a, didn't have a, um, a quality mark, meaning the 18K um, and a maker's mark. It's not legal to quality mark something without also maker as uh, putting a maker's mark in it so in, uh, in other words you cannot show you cannot say something is a certain purity of metal without also um you know making a signature so i wanted to show you a couple pictures real quick here in this picture oh no you can't see it because the picture is this is my bench and there is a maker maker's mark uh, a stamp so how do i get that uh, stamp inside uh, I use a um, curved uh, thing such as this stamp. Oh, now I'm right on, on top of it. It's right underneath my picture. But it's a curved tool, steel tool, custom made. I mean, my maker's mark is custom made. The other one is I can purchase. Uh, they look like this. This is the post that actually prompted this whole um, live. 
So here you have the the bottom one here is my, my maker's mark and you can kind of tell because this has been this was created and then forged and quenched and you can see it's more like hammered and blackened from that process where whereas the other two would be uh, the quality marks that I would have purchased like that. It's very expensive to get these stamps made. Um, so uh, and, and that uh, hammer you see there, that's a brass hammer. I use a brass hammer to apply that uh, in order because the brass is softer than the steel it's hitting and I don't want to wreck those uh, stamps because they're quite um, pricey and so I would place the stamp like this. This is actually, this is a new stamp because this is, it has a slightly different shape. Way more efficient, I gotta say. I found a new uh, stamp maker. And this is the mark for the uh, Fairmind Eco Gold that I'm so proud of. And my, my flow series is made in this gold. This is incredibly ethical gold, the most ethical gold you can find. You can read about that more uh, on, on my website. But so I would place the stamp uh, in this case, it's inside a ring, and I want to make sure that it's in the right place. So I usually wear my uh, visor to make sure it's in the right place. And then see, I can do this without being in the studio. Um, and then um, when it's in the right place, I hit it with a hammer. It has to be a very precise, no doubt, once thing. Some people do it like talk, 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 talk and move it around. But uh, the chances are of the of the stamp moving in that process are too high. It's a little risky. So I like doing it just once uh, and it has to be well supported. So in this case, mm, yeah, kind of there it is from the other side. This Ian Selig, t Selig sorry, took these photos. Um, so here you can see that kind of gunky thing. That's a um, thermal, I forget what it's called, but it's basically, I can warm that up. It becomes malleable. And then uh, I put the ring in it because these rings have such delicate textures on the outside. I put the ring in it and then I let it cool. Uh, and it then is well supported when I hit it with my hammer. So that's why um, I put it in there and that way, it, otherwise the metal would be marked on the other side. I was gonna show you another one, but I may not find that right now. I wasn't quite entirely prepared. I only went down to the studio. I was on my way down to the studio, but you know, 10 minutes before I was gonna come on and could not get in. So yeah, I was gonna show you one more, but It'd be hard to find right now. I made the mistake to go to my favorites. Uh, okay, well, let's forget about that. Uh, yeah, maybe that's enough. That's how uh, that's how these stamps make it inside. Obviously, if it's a flat piece like an earring or a pendant or something, it can be stamped on the back. But the important thing to know is if something is quality marked, it needs to also have a, a maker's mark in it. And by the way, this is also called hallmarking, of course. Uh, but hallmarking has become such a different, uh, that's like a brand now. So I'm going to leave it with this. And hopefully um, next week I can come to you from my studio. And some other time I'm going to talk about like the details of what, uh, what else, um, what the different kinds of maker's marks are. And it's been nice uh, to welcome you here to my home. Uh, and I hope you have a great Sunday. I hope you have power. If you're in Nova Scotia, it's been quite crazy, but today the sun is out. It's beautiful. Have a good day. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching.